Okay, I hinted to you that we're going to talk about volume thermal expansion. In, you might have noticed in the, in the uh, table that we put up showing linear expansion coefficients and volume expansion coefficients that there were no linear expansion coefficients for the liquids. Uh, and the reason is that it really doesn't make sense to really worry about linear expansion of, of a liquid. Um, but it does make sense to think about volume expansion. So the idea is this. You, you have a, a, a pot of water, you heat it up, you increase its temperature thereby, and it expands. Well, um, how much does the volume of that water change? That's what we're talking about here. So the initial volume Uh, when the temperature is um, th at the initial temperature, then the final volume, after you heat it up, is the initial volume, original volume, plus the change in volume. And the te temperature is the initial original temperature plus the change in temperature. So that's what these uh, symbols mean. Um, you got the original volume, the change in the temperature, the change in the volume. It looks just the same, uh, with well, almost the same. Delta L is alpha, L naught, delta T. And here we've got delta V is beta V naught times delta T. And beta uh, is this volume expansion coefficient, also measured in the uh, inverse degree C. Why? Well, volume per, volumes are measured in meters cubed. So this is measured in meters cubed. This is measured in meters cubed. Um, delta T, again, is measured in degrees C. So to get the units right, beta has to be measured, again, the same as, as alpha in inverse degrees centigrade. A small plastic reservoir catches radiator fluid that overflows when an automobile engine becomes hot. Why? Well, the, the radiator fluid expands and it goes into this um, reservoir. The radiator is made of copper. Coolant has a volume expansion coefficient of whatever. If the radiator is filled to its 15 quart capacity when the engine is cold, how much overflow will spill into the reservoir when the coolant reaches its operating temperature? All right. So we've got 15 quarts. And we are increasing the temperature from 6 degrees C when the engine's cold to 92 degrees C when the engine is warm. Difference between those two, 86. So that's my delta T. Here's my volume, measured in this case in quarts. Here's uh, the volume expansion coefficient, 4.10 times 10 to the minus 4 for the coolant. So for the radiator, we are going to look up the uh, volume expansion coefficient of copper and do the same calculation. So the volume of the radiator, the copper, actually increases only by 0.066 quarts, whereas the volume of the coolant that goes in the radiator increases by point a half a quart. That's a lot. And the difference is uh, between these two is how much, 0.53 minus 0.066, that is how much is going to spill into the coolant reservoir. Practical application. Water above 4 degrees uh, expands when heated. So here's 4 degrees C. If we go above 4 degrees, the density of the water goes down. That's what we mean by expansion. If, if, if the water expands and becomes bigger, its mass per unit volume is going to go down. 
but uh, water below 4 degrees C expands when it's cooled. So as we're going down this way to lower temperatures, temperature lower than 4 degrees, we're also expanding. We're going to lower density. It's kind of embarrassing. It, in fact, it's not embarrassing. It's great. It is the reason why life has been able to, to pre be preserved on, on the Earth's surface, this very feature of water. Um, it, it protects aquatic life and it breaks frozen, uh, frozen pipes. Let's talk about the pipes first. Um, if, you've, if you've got water in a pipe and then it freezes, so you're talking about water at a high temperature up here, it um, freezes and becomes ice. So as it's going from down towards zero degree, here's the freezing point. As we're going down toward this freezing point, the density gets less, it expands. So that ice has a lower density than the water just before it froze. It expands, and that expansion is enough to burst pipes. So that's bad. In terms of aquatic life, this is good because wherever the water gets coldest uh, will be at, normally at the surface, the, the water expands and the ice is less dense than the water is. So it floats. And we're going to talk more about this in a later... Um, well, in fact, we did. Archimedes uh, principle we already talked about. So if an object is less dense than its surrounding, then it's going to float. That ice floating on the surface not only allows aquatic life to, to live on that surface, but it doesn't, once it, once it um, becomes ice and freezes, it doesn't go to the bottom and kill the aquatic life below. Very cold winter evening. Uh, iron pipes containing water burst open. What causes catastrophe? In the cold, the iron pipe contracted more than the water. Um, Actually, as we saw in the previous example, the difference between the expansion of the copper and the water was very, very slight. Not a, be not a very big deal. So that's not, um, not the deal. The outside of the pipe contracted more than the inside because the outside temperature was less than the inside temperature. When water freezes, it expands. This expansion of the water could not be stopped by the iron pipe. 